biological aging at the cellular level. Over the long term, this is what causes us to grow old and age. And throughout all of human history, there hasn't been a damn thing that anybody could do about it. But in the last couple of decades, some amazing advances have been made in the field of longevity. And we're finally coming to an understanding of what causes aging. And today, we're going to examine the top 12 theories on the causes of cellular aging. This is Lance, and welcome to today's video. I started this channel to share what I've learned in my quest to turn back the clock on aging. If you enjoy this content, then hit the subscribe button below. And also, leave a comment. And while you're at it, hit the like button. Today, we're taking on cellular aging, and we're going to be examining the top 12 theories on the causes of biological aging at the cellular level. In the rest of the videos in this series, we'll be doing a deep dive into some of the more important ones and looking at them in more detail. We'll also be looking at some things that you can do right now to slow them down. I've posted a link to the first video in this series in the description below. And as I post the rest of the videos in this series, I'll be adding links to those videos as well. So let me start off with a caveat. These 12 theories are in no particular order because there's no consensus on which of them are most important. Also, in the interest of time, this is going to be a high level discussion. If you want more detail on three of them, along with some tips on what you can do to slow them down, check out the rest of the videos in this series. So the first thing we're going to talk about is genome damage or damage to our DNA. Corruption of the DNA takes two forms. Damage to the DNA, such as double and single strand breaks, which can be recognized by enzymes and repaired, and mutations of the base sequence, which cannot be recognized by enzymes and repaired. This leads to aging in a couple of ways. First, damaged DNA activates DNA repairing proteins called PARPs, which can exhaust supplies of NAD+, a molecule that's necessary for supplying energy for a number of anti-aging processes. Also, corrupted DNA can lead to an accumulation of dead or senescent cells or dysfunctioning cells, both of which can contribute to aging. Next up is telomere shortening. Telomeres are caps on the ends of the chromosomes which protect the DNA from damage. With each cell division, these caps get shorter and shorter until after about 50 divisions, there's nothing left to protect the DNA, and the cells then become senescent, which leads to aging. In third place is the field of epigenetics which is the study of mechanisms that manage the expression of genes and how many of these mechanisms decline with age. And the term expression, in this case, refers to the state of the gene, whether it's turned on or off, whether it's activated or not. As these mechanisms decline with age, genes get activated incorrectly, which can lead to aging. Next is unfolded protein response, or misfolded proteins. Proteins are long or short, chains of amino acids, and they're folded into very specific and effective shapes. Proteins function by getting into the correct shape. If proteins are unfolded or misfolded, then they either malfunction or they don't function at all. A buildup of these proteins is a major factor in aging, especially in many age-related neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. Then there's mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, this is not well understood. Mitochondria, as you may recall from high school biology class, are organelles that are contained within the cell, and they're responsible for cell respiration and the cycling of ATP. ATP is what all the nutrients that we consume are turned into, and it's the energy source that fuels every cell in our body, with the exception of the brain. Mitochondria also have their own DNA, called mtDNA, but age-related mitochondrial dysfunction can happen without significant damage or mutations of mtDNA. Communication between the mitochondria and the cell is one possible source of this dysfunction, but whatever the source, it leads to aging. 
Another cause of aging is cell senescence, which is when the functioning of aging cells goes into decline. They stop dividing, they can change activity, and they can begin secreting inflammatory molecules. Although the number of senescent cells can be quite small within the human body, the damage that they can do can be profound and widespread. And as they accumulate over time, this damage can become more and more pronounced. And aging occurs. Okay, we're halfway through. You know, if you find this type of content interesting and you'd like me to do more, or if you find it super boring and you're having a hard time staying awake, leave a comment below and let me know either way. Okay, number seven, stem cell exhaustion. Stem cells are undifferentiated cells, meaning that they belong to no specific organ or tissue type, but they can develop into very specific cell types. And there are many different types of stem cells in the human body. Stem cells are what allow for the renewal of cells within an organ. And as we age, stem cells can become exhausted due to DNA damage or overexpression of proteins that block the cellular cycle. And stem cell exhaustion is one of the primary causes of aging. Next up is glycation, which is when sugar molecules in the bloodstream bind to proteins and fats, resulting in harmful molecules called advanced glycation end products, also known as AGEs. While AGEs can impact the whole body, they have a particularly nasty effect on the skin. AGEs can cause both collagen and elastin to become discolored, weak, and less supple. And this can show up on the skin surface as wrinkles, sagging, and a loss of radiance, all symptoms of aging. Number nine is the AMPK pathway. Now remember earlier when I was talking about ATP, the universal energy source? When ATP releases its energy, the ATP molecule is converted into a molecule called AMP. Rising levels of AMP and declining levels of ATP cause the activation of an enzyme called AMPK. Activated AMPK promotes the rapid, efficient release of energy with little energy stored as fat, resulting in low blood sugar and fat levels, increased insulin sensitivity, and a low risk of heart disease, diabetes, and other metabolic disorders. It also promotes a steady renewal of cellular components, is critical to the immune system, and it reduces inflammation. But like everything else, AMPK levels decrease sharply with age. These processes then decline, and this leads to aging. Then there's a damage caused by chronic inflammation and a declining immune system. While acute inflammation can be a good thing, fighting off infections and helping to heal wounds, chronic, systemic, and low-grade inflammation is a complicated process where our bodies can release pro-inflammatory signals like cytokines and reactive oxygen species. And these substances cause oxidative damage to our cells and tissue. As we age, our immune systems also go into decline, making us more susceptible to chronic diseases. The thalamus, a gland that is responsible for the creation of new T cells, a major component of the immune system, goes into decline as we age, slowly converting most of its active tissue into fat. Chronic inflammation and a declining immune system are considered by many to be a leading, if not the primary cause of aging. At number 11 is the mTOR pathway, which also involves the human growth hormone insulin-like growth factor one axis. This pathway is the master regulator of anabolic metabolism which is the process where new tissue is built. mTOR regulates cell growth, proliferation, mortality, and survival. It regulates protein synthesis, autophagy, and transcription. mTOR is activated by insulin-like growth factor one, a derivative of human growth hormone, and it senses amino acids, becoming most active in an environment of nutrient abundance. And here's the thing about mTOR. It's great for growth, but bad for lifespans. Think about how rapid growth, like in insects and mice, is associated with short lifespans, but, long, uh, but slow growth, like with elephants and whales, is associated with long lifespans. So with the mTOR pathway, it's a trade-off. You can have a lot of growth or a long lifespan, but not both. So suppressing the mTOR bath, uh, pathway is beneficial to increasing your lifespan. 
And finally, at number 12 are the sirtuins, which are seven genes that are actually nicknamed the longevity genes because of the critical role that they play in many functions that influence the aging process. They regulate mitochondrial biogenesis. They stimulate apoptosis and autophagy. They inhibit inflammation, and they stimulate signaling between the nucleus and the mitochondria, and between the hypothalamus and fat tissue. And three of them are involved in the repair of DNA, and they can only function in the presence of NAD+, which declines with age, as does the production of sirtuins. And guess what? That can lead to aging. Okay, finished. We got through it all. We've taken a high-level view of the top 12 theories on the causes of biological aging at the cellular level. Now, while some of these are being researched, with therapies getting closer and closer every day, some of these theories have resulted in interventions that you can implement today. And we'll be taking a look at some of those in greater detail in the rest of the videos in this series, along with the accompanying treatments. If you enjoyed this video or you found it informative, then please hit the subscribe button below. Leave a comment and tell me whether you find this type of content interesting or boring. Hit the like button, share this video with your friends and on your social media, and click the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Tuesday. And as always, thank you so much for watching.